Good afternoon, everybody. Everybody here okay? Everybody all set? Well, good afternoon. My name is Barbara McQuaid. I'm the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan. Thank you all for uh, coming to hear what we have to say today. Uh, but uh, no one can speak louder than the jury who already spoke today. And as I'm sure you have heard, the jury has convicted Kwame Kilpatrick of racketeering, extortion, bribery, fraud, and tax violations. In addition, the jury has also convicted Bobby Ferguson of racketeering, extortion, and bribery, and Bernard Kilpatrick of one count of tax violations. With today's convictions, 35 different people have now been convicted in connection with corruption in our investigation into City Hall during the Kilpatrick administration. The jury spoke to members of the press after their verdict. I know many of you were there. Uh, and uh, no one could have said it more beautifully, I think, than what the jury had to say. They said that they recognized that they were the voice of this community. And they recognized that this was not a victimless crime. And they said that although they didn't feel anger and they didn't uh, want to uh, uh, hurt the defendants, they saw it as their responsibility to hold these defendants accountable for their conduct. One juror said that she is a Detroiter and voted for Kwame Kilpatrick for mayor twice herself but that the evidence that she saw in this case made her stomach turn. And so the jury did what they were supposed to do. They followed their responsibility to convict these defendants and find them guilty. I want to introduce some of the other people who are here with me today. Bob Foley, who is the special agent in charge of the FBI in Detroit. Eric Martinez, the special agent in charge of the IRS criminal investigations. Randall Ash, who is the special agent in charge for the Environmental Protection Agency criminal investigations. Assistant U.S. attorneys who handled this case, Mark Chutko, Michael Bellotta, Jennifer Blackwell, and Eric Doa, and the case agents who worked so hard to put this investigation together, Special Agent Bob Beckman from the FBI, Special Agent Carol Paskevich from EPA, and Special Agents Ron Sauer and Rowena Shook from IRS. First, I thought I would talk just a little bit about the verdict itself. And then I thought I would uh, share with you some of my thoughts about the significance of today's verdict. Today, the jury found Kwame Kilpatrick guilty of not just committing uh, small crimes, but of committing very serious crimes, of using the power of his public office to enrich himself and his friends and family instead of serving the people who elected him. At its most basic element, the case was really about this. Kwame Kilpatrick stole money from the people of Detroit. He may have used sophisticated methods to do it, but at the end of the day, what he was doing was stealing money that didn't belong to him, stealing money that belonged to the people of Detroit. And while Kwame Kilpatrick enjoyed a lavish lifestyle, he watched the quality of life erode for the people of Detroit. I want to talk about three categories of crimes that were part of the jury's verdict today. First, racketeering, or RICO. That racketeering conviction uh, shows that this jury found that Kwame Kilpatrick created a culture of doing business in Detroit. If you wanted a contract in Detroit, you had to pay bribes. The mayor cheated the system. If you wanted a contract, you had to get his friend Bobby Ferguson in on one of the contracts. He had to have a subcontract. He had to have a piece of the action. And if he wasn't part of the contract, then you didn't get to do business in Detroit. In all, Bobby Ferguson received $127 million worth of city contracts from the city of Detroit. Those weren't Kwame Kilpatrick's contracts. Those were the people's contracts, and it was that money that he squandered. The former mayor was not focused on running the city. He was focused on using the mayor's office as a money-making machine for himself and his family and friends. He was grabbing money from the citizens that he was elected to serve. Second, I want to talk about the Kilpatrick Civic Fund. This was the civic fund that Kwame Kilpatrick set up purportedly to serve the citizens of Detroit, the youth of Detroit, seniors of Detroit, voter education, and he stole money from that nonprofit organization. He stole money from the donors, half a million dollars, and he spent it on things like yoga lessons for himself, golf clubs, vacations at luxury resorts, summer camp for his kids, things we'd all love to spend money on, but not money we don't have. And that money came right out of the pockets of the people of Detroit. Kwame Kilpatrick didn't lead the city, he looted the city. And third, the state arts grant. I thought the evidence in that count was particularly significant because it showed that even before he became mayor, Kwame Kilpatrick was using his office 
in the Michigan legislature to rob the people and to enrich his friends and himself, including Bobby Ferguson. He was abusing power even before he became mayor of Detroit. So it was not the power of City Hall that corrupted Kwame Kilpatrick. Kwame Kilpatrick corrupted City Hall. <clears throat> and now I thought I'd say a word about the significance of this case. Through this jury, our community has spoken. In our legal system, that's how it works. The jury speaks on behalf of the people. And our community has said, you can't cheat the citizens and get away with it. A public corruption case like this is so harmful because it not only robs the people of Detroit of the money that belongs to them, but it also erodes public confidence in government, which is absolutely essential to being effective. And this kind of corruption also discourages legitimate businesses from doing business in our city. And that's another harm. And although this case spanned many years, this case is not about the past, it's about the future. We hope that this prosecution will deter candidates from seeking public office to enrich themselves because they know that they won't be able to get away with it. We don't expect our public officials to be perfect, but we do expect them to do their best to serve the people. This case should stand for the notion that you should seek public office to make a difference, not to make money. We also hope that this case will empower contractors who face extortion in the future to come forward to us instead of complying with the demands of criminals who seek to shake them down. As Mark Chutko said in his, uh, his rebuttal argument, he said it very simply but very eloquently, corruption depends on indifference. Corruption occurs when public officials think no one's watching or no one cares or no one dares to challenge authority. And that culture spreads like poison because people figure, well, if other people are doing it, why shouldn't I get my piece of the pie? In the Kilpatrick administration, 35 different people thought that they deserved their piece of the pie. It was poison and it spread throughout City Hall. But when officials and contractors realize that there is a heavy price to be paid for getting their piece of the pie, that changes the risk analysis. We hope that this prosecution sends the message that this community cares and will hold public officials accountable for betraying the public trust. The jury has spoken and they have said the people of Detroit deserve better, expect better, and demand better. And speaking of the jury, I, I want to say just a word of thanks to this jury. They were incredibly conscientious. I have never seen a jury like this. They've come for six months, given up uh, so many aspects of their personal lives, made great sacrifices, uh, and were incredibly diligent in uh, their attention to the evidence, in their deliberations, and uh, we are so appreciative to them for their very hard work in taking their civic duty so responsibly. This is also a noticeably diverse jury uh, with great racial diversity, which I think is important because it instills public confidence in their verdict. I also want to thank the two grand juries that investigated uh, this case. They were just as diligent as the trial jury, and we are grateful for their service as well. I want to thank Judge Edmonds and her staff, the court staff, the U.S. Marshal Service, uh, for all of their hard work and professionalism for carrying out this trial and keeping everyone on task. And finally, I want to say a word about this team. Today's verdict is the culmination of years of hard work by the people you stand, see here standing with me and also by dozens of others who are not here today, uh, people like Jeff Collins, Steve Murphy, Terry Berg, Lynn Helland, and while we are all gratified by the jury's decision to hold these defendants accountable, uh, this is not a day for celebration by the prosecution. This case was hard. It was difficult, but it was necessary. And the men and women that you see standing before you here today have given up countless nights and weekends and holidays with their families to work on this case, <coughs> away from their families with no additional pay for overtime. In contrast to Kwame Kilpatrick, this is real public service, and I am deeply proud of their work. But whether their sacrifices result in meaningful and long-lasting change is now up to all of the rest of us in this community. Thank you.